Uh, hello everyone. Welcome back. So in the last lecture we were looking at uh, the wave equation and we saw how the wave equation is uh, modified when we go from vacuum to any dielectric medium. And we also saw that uh, the solution of a wave equation is a electromagnetic wave which has electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other and both electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So in this lecture we will try to take a, a deeper look into how the electromagnetic waves behave. So to start with uh, let's look at the wave equation that we have already seen, right? So I mean this is a general equation three dimensional equation where you know Laplacian is you know dou x square by dou square by dou x square plus dou y dou square by dou y square plus dou square by dou z square. But if I want to look at uh, I mean, it's complicated to look at solutions in three dimensions. Okay, a general solution to a wave equation could be of this form. You know, and the electric and magnetic fields are given here. So uh, we will understand this in a little bit detail later on. But initially, we are essentially expressing it as a real part of an exponential, right? And you have certain uh, wave vectors, and uh, there is a time dependence as well. So. Uh, it's as I said, it's difficult to understand this uh, easily in three dimensions. So let's consider the one dimensional case. So let me write the wave equation in one dimensions. So it will be d square uh, dou square e by dou x square is n square by c square dou square e by dou t square, right? And what will be a solution to this equation? A simple uh, solution could be of this form e of x t is e naught exponential i k x minus i omega t. This is a simple solution. Okay, this is a solution we will consider here today. But there could also be another solution to this, which is uh, minus of it. So e naught exponential minus of uh, i k x minus i omega t. Okay, these are the two solutions that will be allowed. Okay, so one thing I want you to note is that uh, the the sign of the time dependence plays a crucial role. Okay, so in a, in the first case we are considering the sign to be minus i omega t, the sign uh, the time dependence. Okay, in the second case it is plus i omega t because minus and minus right it becomes plus i omega t, and that has some implications in the notation. So it turns out that uh, the minus i omega t notation is used in the physics community and the plus i omega t notation is used in the engineering community. So because of that sometimes some parameters look different but it's just the, the sign convention that they're adopting. Okay? All right, so we have this plane wave. Okay? So what? why do we actually call it a plane wave? The reason we call it a plane wave is that if you plot out the wave, we, we can easily see that it's a sinusoidal wave, right? But if you look at the constant phase fronts, okay. For example, I have this uh, wave here, which is moving in this sinusoidal fashion, and we know that the phase is, let's say, positive. We represent it by red, and the negative phase, we represent negative uh, part of it, we represent it by blue. So what's happening is the the phase, the constant fa uh, phase front, is a plane, okay. So let's uh, so surfaces of constant phase are planes and they are perpendicular to the direction of propagation and they are direction of propagation. So because of that we call this particular wave as a plane wave. I mean, it's easy to see that if you, you know, because there's not even any, you know, other y dependence. Let's say the, okay, let's say the propagation direction in this case is uh, x, okay? So there is in the, in the perpendicular y and z directions, there is y direction, there is no variation. So it's a constant phase that way. All right. So this is a plane wave. And because of the Maxwell's equations, you know, the way they are symmetric, if you calculate, you, let's say, assume this exponential i k x uh, dependence, and then calculate the magnetic field, you'll also see that it's perpendicular. It will turn out naturally, it will turn out to be in the y direction, okay, the perpendicular direction, all right. And if you look at the the way the energy propagates, it is going to be dependent on the cross product of the electric and the magnetic fields, and that is given by the pointing vector, s, okay. Then the time average of that is the uh, the speed with which energy propagates in a particular direction. 
so far these are something that you must have look uh, studied in the electromagnetics courses right so what i want to do is take one step forward okay and discuss what is known as a dispersion relation it's a very important uh, relation that uh, helps us understand the way electromagnetic waves behave in a particular medium so we are already familiar with the wave equation right we saw that okay the the second order derivative in space is related to the time derivative but in the past in the, in the previous lecture we saw that this coefficient was mu epsilon but why am i writing it as n square by c square this is simple algebra but i just want you to note this you know so mu is essentially relative permeability permeability times mu not and similarly epsilon is epsilon relative times epsilon not and so this will essentially turn out to be uh, n square by c square because we saw that mu not epsilon not is 1 by c square and uh, mu relative is 1 i mean in this case there is no magnetic response and uh, n is root of epsilon r so because of that this is how it's a dif different form of writing a wave equation there's no big difference okay okay so we have this wave equation let's consider the the 1d solution that we mentioned in the previous uh, slide let's say e of xt is equal to e not exponential i k x minus i omega t so i am considering only one type of solution here okay minus i omega t that's the sign convention i'll use in this course so what happens so let's apply this e so if you take the lhs lhs is now going to be uh second derivative in space dx square so that is going to be minus k square the same e right minus k square e okay. the second derivative if you take it will turn out to be that and similarly rhs is going to be if i just take the the second derivative right uh do square e by do t square if i take that's going to be minus omega square e right of course there's a constant term so if i combine this if i call it 1 and 2 if i combine 1 and 2 i'll end up getting k square equal to n square by c square omega square okay so this is a very important relationship that uh, tells us quite a bit okay and that's why we give it a separate name we call it dispersion relation so if i rewrite in terms of omega omega square is going to be c square by n square times k square what does this tell us okay let's first consider the case uh, of uh, vacuum okay if i take vacuum sorry if i take vacuum my n is 1 so omega square equal to c square k square so i can write out as uh, omega square equal to c square k square this implies omega equal to plus or minus ck all right so this tells us that the dispersion is linear for an electromagnetic wave and i can plot it the way i have shown here so if i have k in the x axis and the omega in the y axis the relation is linear the the slope is essentially the uh, the speed of the wave and both negative and positive case are allowed so you have this sort of a cone in three dimensions it will be a cone in one dimension it's going to be uh, the space between these two lines omega equal to ck lines all right so now what happens if you have a medium uh, with uh, n greater than 1 okay let's say some medium with n greater than 1 well can n be less than 1 do you know of any naturally occurring material that is having refractive index less than 1 uh i think the answer would be no for most of you but it turns out that yeah you can engineer certain things but of course you cannot uh, modify it a uh, lot it depends on uh, we will study when we study meta materials we can see how the n is going to change all right so so if i have n greater than 1 what would that imply so basically omega is now plus or minus c by n k so if you have a medium which is uh, having higher index then the slope is changing 
okay so that's why i'm depicting the let's say reflective index of 1.5 i have i'm depicting with the blue line so these are two media that are uh, that are the, the dispersion relation changes okay so uh, from the picture if you look at this graph you might be tempted to think that the frequency is a function of wave vector you change the wave vector k and the frequency changes is that is that something that makes sense if you think about it you'll see that uh, the frequency is essentially a property of the source so the way the electromagnetic wave is generated is dependent on the source just because that wave is incident on a piece of piece of glass uh, the field varies in the at the source that is going to be there even in the medium so it turns even though you know it's kind of uh, sometimes confusing that you might think that the frequency is going to change but the way to read this dispersion relation is that you consider a particular frequency okay and see what is the wave vector okay this is let's say omega not that is my source frequency so if you have that wave vector uh, frequency what is the wave vector in medium 1 what is the wave vector in the medium 2 okay typically when i say uh, if i consider n equal to 1 right n equal to 1 air i usually call it as k not wave vector in that medium i'll call it as free space wave vector or k not okay k no uh, wave free space k else okay and uh, any other medium the k is going to change okay we will come back to it in a moment but uh, right now yeah so i want you to understand this and also you know you might be tempted to think that the dispersion is always linear but it's not the case okay you can also have some modes in a structure which can cause the dispersion to be quadratic or parabolic whatever i mean you can have a different shape not no, uh, not linear right you can have higher orders uh so this is one such example is a guided mode you can have let's say you know uh in a wave guide you can have modes which essentially have a flat dispersion here or you know the the mode is having the omega versus k relation relatively flat here it has certain implications okay and in this context i should also introduce two terms one is the group velocity one is the phase velocity so when you think of the group velocity that is essentially given by the first derivative of the omega versus k so the d omega by dk is known as group velocity and it essentially denotes how uh, the speed of energy propagation okay energy propagation velocity is a group velocity okay and uh, similarly phase velocity simply the ratio of omega by k and you know c by n and this this sort of you know this is the speed with which the phase propagates phase propagation velocity that's a phase velocity okay in the case of uh, simple dielectrics right like air glass and so on the group and the phase velocities are same but this need not be the case in there are some situations where you can have group velocity be much much more smaller all right so why is this useful why is this concept of you know different case useful all right to understand that let's examine this okay let's examine the electromagnetic wave and we already saw that the dispersion is going to be given by this relation the ks are relation related to the refractive index and in the previous lectures we have seen that the refractive index is a number you know if you take a particular wavelength let's say 500 nanometers i have a particular refractive index associated with that if i take another wavelength my refractive index will change so it seems like the refractive index is real right this is the situations we have encountered so far but it's not all situations this is only for lost what we call as lossless materials okay or transparent materials you can have refractive index to be only a real number whereas in absorbing materials we will have n to be complex all right so i can represent n as a real part n prime plus i n double prime okay so just as a caveat to people you know from different communities in some textbooks they use uh, this definition instead of plus they use n prime minus i n double prime so this is used when you use the 
i omega t notation this definition is used when you use minus i omega t notation so depending on the initial sign notation that you have taken uh, you have to choose okay but in our course we will simply use the plus sign all the time so we are using uh, exponential i omega t notation minus i omega t notation all right okay so what is the implication of having a dispersion relation uh, rather you know of having the refractive index as complex to see that let's expand the the k wave vector k that we got and we can write plus or minus omega c by c times n prime plus i n double prime okay i mean this easily translates to plus or minus omega n prime by c plus i omega n double prime by c okay the reason this is important is uh, can be it can be seen by plugging it back into the original uh, expression for the field okay so we had e not exponential i k x minus i omega t this was the plane wave that we have considered so now let me try to put the k that i have in that in the previous slide okay so this becomes exponential i now my k is a complex quantity omega n prime by c plus i omega n double prime by c okay and then x minus i omega t this is expansion okay and if you for uh, try to if you club the terms containing the imaginary part and the real part you will see that i can write this as exponential i omega n prime by c uh i will not do this i'll just let me yeah i omega n prime by c minus i omega t this is one term and then the there's an i in the second term here so there's an i here there's an i here so i can take a product of it so if i separate out the exponential there will be another exponential here minus omega by c n double prime x and this is this should be next here all right so what does this mean so our solution our plane wave has two exponentials in it one is the uh, the regular exponent uh, x you know minus uh, so i k x minus i omega t kind of an expression the second part is a minus omega by c n double prime x so what happens to the second term let's consider this this particular thing what happens to this term as x increases as you go to larger and larger x the e x or whatever the exponential term right exponential this term exponential this term reduces right it decays so this essentially captures the decay of em wave and that is why we say that the imaginary part of the refractive index is it gives the absorption of the wave okay this is absorption of wave okay so that's why when you have a the imaginary part to be zero that means there is no absorption and hence the material is transparent okay so initially we saw that the transparent materials n is real that is because the imaginary part is zero that's why no absorption okay but in general the refractive index has to be complex all right and what about this other part this is essentially the what happens to this as x increases or x goes to infinity what happens does it go to zero no it doesn't right it oscillate as x increases uh, exponential this term oscillates sinusoidally so this we call as a propagating wave propagating or traveling wave it never goes to zero it just keeps going on to infinity okay whereas this uh, the exponential minus uh, kx or you know the decaying part attenuates the wave okay so how does the exponential look how does the wave look like now if i try to plot out the sinusoids it's going to be i can draw one I, as a function of x if i plot out e of x how does it look like i mean it it's a, i mean all of you must be familiar with this sort of a behavior wherein you have a wave which decays okay so this envelope is exponential 
minus omega by c n double prime x all right so this is the decay so i want you to try out let's say this definition right of my electromagnetic wave exponential i k x minus i omega t definition you take and then consider what happens if what happens if n equal to n prime minus i and n double prime just consider what happens okay so this is we are considering the refractive index of a dielectric right this is the assumption we are making this is the refractive index okay the refractive index of dielectric and if i substitute back into this exponential i k x minus i omega t what will happen how will the wave look like and does that make physical sense okay you are having a pure dielectric does it make sense that's something that i want you to think about and we will revisit this down the line all right so uh just you know summarizing whatever i have done in a better form than my handwriting so you see the same things you know absorbing materials are complex uh, have a complex refractive index and then i can express my k as this one okay i have written this part uh, but because of convention the the k corresponding to the you know the k corresponding to the real part of n we'll call it as beta this is a propagation constant this is usually referred as beta which is a propagation constant it's just a definition okay propagation constant and the imaginary part i'll call it as attenuation constant so essentially i'm defining so i mean the same definition is given here so you can just check this out so the reason we are putting a 2 here is that the attenuation is defined as you know the intensity that is absorbed over you know intensity is always square of electric field so that that's why we put a divide by 2 here just attenuation constant is going to be some number again okay, okay. so this is what i uh, this is the this describes the how the waves behave when you have uh, um, we ha we saw that you know the wave equation describes the waves uh, how they propagate in a medium and we also saw that okay there is something called as a dispersion relation that is very very important and we saw some features of it right so this is what we have done so far so i'll stop here for this lecture and then i'll continue in the next lecture thank you so much Thank you.